Japan pro wrestling is draped in tradition. Whether it's the multi-man tag team matches where most of the roster refusing to throw closed fists, there's, there's a lot of things you can pretty much expect from New Japan pro wrestling. Then there's Suzuki Gun, led by Minoru Suzuki. Suzuki Gun breaks all conventions and then pisses off. They're so fucking off the chain, it's almost like they don't even fit in New Japan. I guess you can say their Usher Heel tactics have pretty much become a tradition in New Japan. But aside from that, they're totally unpredictable and you never know what they might do aside from beating your ass. Now while every member of Suzuki Go is a certified psychopath, I think it's fair to say that the leader, Minoru Suzuki himself, stands out from the crowd. Dude is a straight up sadist who loves to dish out pain and he can take some of it too with a smile. As recently evidenced in his brutal war against John Dean Moxley, where he made some crazy ass facial expressions that might have had you think he bust a nut while he was getting his ass handed to him. Which actually got me the idea to come up with this little video list. So with that said, crazy wrestlers is not a new thing since I've been watching wrestling. The crazy psycho dude has always been a fairly common gimmick. But not everyone can pull that off. You might have a guy like Brian Pillman who was like okay with the crazy guy gimmick. But then you got other guys who was like a totally another level. Like they were believable with this shit. A la Macho Man. He has you thinking, yo, this nigga is off his fucking rocker. You know what I'm saying? So this list is dedicated to the craziest, most unhinged personalities in pro wrestling history. Let's run it down. First up is Mick Foley. Now, before Mick became known as a cheap popping funny guy, he was for comic relief. He was known as one of the most off the chain, off his rocker, hardcore wrestlers. Known across the world for, for competing in death matches, losing his fucking ear. Bleeding pints of fucking fluid. Just a crazy motherfucker. When I first encountered Mick Foley, he was actually Cactus Jack Master. And I realized very quickly that this wasn't the average type of wrestler. Dude was like doing those crazy ass. I guess it was like. Sentine bombs, pretty much, you would call them, where he would fucking like. Do a front was flip off the fucking apron onto the floor. Like back in the day, that was some like, whoa, what the fuck is this nigga doing type of shit? But even back then, JR let us know that this is the type of motherfucker who would put his own body through hell and anguish just to deliver some pain to your ass. And of course, this crazy persona. Evolved over the years as Nick Foley himself evolved with different characters in the form of Mankind, probably his craziest and most brilliant wrestling gimmick, as well as Do Love, and he did the multiple personality thing for a minute where he would like shift back and forth between those three main characters. But yeah, before he uh, started being funny and uh, Cracking jokes, making a, a comic team with the rock and shit. Nick was out of his motherfucking hookup and very convincing with it. Next up, we have Sid Vicious. Sid is one of my favorite wrestlers of all times, and he thrived in the era 
where wrestling was truly about pushing the concept of larger than life personality. I mean, you have a guy who's like fucking 6'8 ish, 6'10, 300 pounds, built like a Greek god, and of course, he's just out of his fucking mind and shit. And from the moment I saw Sid in the Four Horsemen, he always had that edge where, like, he don't even fit with these guys because he's just out of his fucking mind. And these niggas all flashy and sport of Rolexes, and this nigga looking like he escaped from the fucking crazy house and shit. But Sid, man, I think one of his uh, best attributes was actually his promo skills, and that's where he really let his uh, psychotic side really shine. He gets fucking shit on from that one promo that he fucking fucked up, obviously didn't know it was live or whatever. But beyond that, I thought Sid was very good on the mic. He was just intense, and the lines and the way he delivered them, the way he talked, the way he would just be dripping with fucking sweat and gritting his teeth and shit. Like, this dude, he really is psycho fucking sick. And I will have to put him beside the Briscoes and Homicide for the select few guys I truly would not want to run into in the alley. Because they have that intimidating fucking vibe to them that even makes a stand-up alpha male like me think twice about having a one-on-one encounter with him. So Sid, he was the title package and definitely a crazy motherfucker. Number three on our list is the badass from the Double Cross Ranch, Terry Funk. Now Terry really let his, uh, he became widely known that he was a little bit uh, special once he uh, progressed in his career. And we saw him in places like ECW and later WWF where he was kind of like a crazy fucking uh, old man type of senile motherfucker level crazy. But before that, I thought he really uh, pulled off a more brilliant and... uh, What's the fucking word I'm looking for? A more brilliant, charismatic, sociopathic type of crazy. And I'm speaking more specifically about his feud with Ric Flair in the early 90s. When we saw a different side of Terry Funk, where he was more like composed and calculated instead of just being a, a outlaw fucking out of his gores type of crazy, if that makes any sense. But yeah, Terry Funk, man, like, similar to uh, Captain Jack, who I guess is, in many ways, like his protege. Funk is known for his hardcore wrestling, taking mad bumps, mad risks, mad injuries, plenty of fucking, uh, gruesome images out here where he's fucking bleeding buckets, all tangled up in barbed wire. I mean, the dude don't have to fucking play crazy. When you're going through those type of matches, you probably are missing a couple of your fucking marbles. So, Terry Funk holding it down at number three on our list. I actually gave away number four during my intro. I had another wrestler in mind, but I couldn't fucking remember it. So, on the fly, just blurred out Macho Man. He is number four. Also one of my all-time favorite wrestlers. From the moment I've known him, my first song was uh, WWF. He was beefing with Tito Santana. Macho Man always had that wild-ass, unpredictable trait about him. And over the years, he's he's uh, portrayed various forms of fucking craziness, for lack of a better word. <laughs> He really showed just how fucking psychotic he was. A, whenever Liz was involved, because he was like crazy, possessive, over, and jealous, as evidenced in his feud with uh, George the Animal Steel. But it really came out when he had his feud with Hulk Hogan. 
Uh, you may know the Mega Powers, big ass fucking angle with WWF. Two very unlikely faces come together to fucking destroy the evil forces of the Hingman family and other hills. But of course, Hogan getting his shine. Liz starting to butt up to Hogan. Hogan, you know that slick ass nigga can't be trusted. So, Savage, you know, he started getting jealous. And one night, Saturday night, main event to be specific, all things come to a head. Savage blows the fuck up. You have the incident in the fucking locker room where he just beats the shit out of Hogan. And he's just fucking losing his shit. Let all his jealousy and emotions flow. And it's, it's fucking way cheesy, especially Hogan and shit. But I thought Savage executed his part brilliantly. Because I really think Savage probably truly was a little bit off his shit. And that's my dude, no disrespect, but the nigga was probably missing a few. And we saw this again in, in the little bits and pieces in WCW. Probably uh, best in the NWO. Not just when he was beefing with Hogan, but when he had his beef with guys like Diamond Dallas Page. So, Macho Man, he pulled off crazy. Arguably better than anyone else ever did in pro wrestling. So, he has a worthy spot on his list. Last but not least, my homeboy and yours from Detroit, Michigan. Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner. Now, I think Steiner's transformation and evolution over the years has been nothing short of incredible. Coming from a super athletic, very technically sound suplex machine to this genetic freak who was almost unrecognizable in the Big Bad Booty Daddy. It was just crazy, man. This dude pretty much uh, was reborn again. Similar to a guy like uh, Ray Wyatt coming from Husky Harris where Sting going on pro Sting. That's how dramatic the shit was. And also his personality, of course, changed a great deal because Steiner, he was always the more outspoken member of the Steiner brothers. But, uh, like, once the NWO came around and shit got more tense, Scotty got more tense. And uh, he became more of a loose cannon and shit, man. And, of course, when he became Big Papa Pump, I don't want to fucking blast steroids. I don't know what the nigga do with his body and shit, but he just seemed to have a an even hotter temper. Of course, in his, in his persona, the gimmick and whatnot, which he carried with him throughout to WWF, to TNA and beyond, but also, you know, in shoot interviews and shit like that, to the point where he's like banned from the WWE Hall of Fame and shit. He's just like, he's just out of his shit, it seems like, man. So I know a lot of times wrestlers are still in the uh, character when they do these little interviews and interact with public and whatnot, but Scott Steiner, he always had that, that loose cannon, unpredictable, gives no fucks, crazy guy, persona to him, and he pulled it off pretty damn well. I'm not gonna say he's number one, the most crazy motherfucker in roster. This list is in no particular order, but he's definitely a motherfucker who could use a therapist or two. So there you have it. That's my list. Let me know what you think about it. Who would you take off? Who would you add? There you have it. Peace.